Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where in today's episode, Opie tells a tale about moving next to the most entitled elderly neighbors ever, who keeps calling the police on his two boys, and Opie decides to teach the two a lesson they won't forget. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's story. Hit subscribe if you haven't, and as always, you can send or link your stories to this email right here. Let's dive in, guys. So to start the story, my crib midget evolved into a mini-human, and my mini-human is now an adult male body which is unfortunately still outfitted with a teenage brain. Don't worry though, he knows everything. I myself have a late 30s model body, but my teenage brain is coming along well. With that said, my loving wife is still able to maintain her sanity with two and a half boys and a half male adult in the house. However, the house was too small and we needed more legroom, so we decided to move on up. The new house was everything we wanted. There was ample room for the growing family, and the boys would conquer the upstairs and even have their own bathroom to grow science experiments. My 11-year-old mini-human shares my OCD and keeps his room in working order. My 15-year-old, however, well, we don't touch that sock under his bed. Typical boy stuff, I suppose. Moving to the new house, my wife and I now had a giant backyard. We had a two-car garage to store her Christmas and Halloween decorations, and the neighborhood is gorgeous. I can literally walk to the clubhouse and play a round of golf. The cul-de-sac we live on is dominated by currently serving or retired military families. Everybody was extremely welcoming at the homeowners association, and the neighbors were all friendly. Well, at least for the moment. I've read about the neighbor horror stories, I've seen them on television, but I never in a million years thought that I would live next to them. I'm a gunfighter by trade, and believe it or not, I don't like war. I like my job, but I don't enjoy the carnage of war. I'm a realist, though. I would totally cast my ballot for world peace, but I know it only takes one a-hole to ruin it for everyone. My immediate neighbors became those a-holes. So enter the entitled neighbors, Kevin and Karen. The two seemed nice at first. They were both really helpful, especially Kevin. Kevin served in the Air Force, and Karen was a stay-at-home mom. They enlightened me regarding the neighborhood, the quality of the schools, and told me tips and tricks to avoid any hassle with the HOA. Pretty great, right? Until the pandemic hit. The onset of COVID forced the school district to cancel the remainder of the school year, so the boys didn't turn into zombies. However, the mass hysteria allowed my humanoids to become semi-professional Fortnite gamers, who smelled like ball funk and survived on soda and zebra cakes. They were quickly becoming chubby bunnies, and I, being neighborly, informed Kevin and Karen that I would be in the market for a portable basketball hoop to combat childhood obesity and type 2 diabetes. The day before I get said basketball hoop, I decide to knock on their door. I greet them and tell them I'm thinking about getting a basketball hoop for the boys. To which Karen says, oh, that's so great. It's so good to have young children in the neighborhood again. Her husband Kevin says, you know you can't put that in the street, right? It's against HOA rules. Kevin is a rules guy. I tell him, I'm well aware, I'll be putting it on the back pad. Karen says, that's great. If the ball ever goes over the fence, just tell them to come get it. Anytime. No problem. And I'm thinking, awesome, it was such a positive interaction and they had no issue. Onward to Walmart. Now, a little note is that my children are well behaved. Now, they might act like little crapheads to each other and inside the house, but they're both kind and courteous to others. Despite Karen's instructions, I told them to knock on the door if the ball ever goes over the fence. So they did, and that's when the chaos started. The first bounce over, my son goes to knock on the door. He retrieves the ball, and it's all fine, right? No. Kevin marches to my house, knocks on my door, and I answer saying, Hey, Kevin, uh, how can I help you? Kevin was clearly annoyed, and he said, You know, the ball went over the fence. I ask him, did the boys knock and ask to get it? Kevin says, yes, I just wanted to let you know. With that, he marches off, and I spoke to my wife afterwards, thinking, that was odd. Like, is this guy gonna let me know each time the ball goes over the fence? At that moment, I felt like knocking on his door and saying, hey Kevin, just wanted to let you know that your car is parked in the driveway. My wife told me not to start any trouble though. This process quickly became a routine for Kevin. Kevin became a self-licking ice cream cone. Kevin came over six times in the course of about three months, and my wife began keeping tallies because it was odd but somewhat comical. And then things started to get real. One day, my 11-year-old comes running into the house and he was scared. My boy had tears in his eyes and he was continually saying, I didn't do anything wrong, I didn't do anything wrong. Nobody's accused me of being the world's best dad, so I was wondering if he did in fact do something wrong. 
I forgo waterboarding him this time and ask what he's talking about. And that's when he said, Karen's recording me. I look outside and sure as day, I see Karen at the fence, pointing her cell phone at me as if it was a loaded weapon. And I'm thinking, oh, well, this isn't good, because I know my wife is gonna lose her lid, and she did. A little bit about my wife is she's dainty, but she quickly turned into a 4'11 Muhammad Ali. And let me tell ya, it took every effing ounce of verbal reasoning for me to stop her from physically rearranging Karen's face. I knew Karen's tactic to scare and record my son was immoral and unethical, but it was perfectly legal. This didn't sit well with my wife though, and that's when I reminded my wife that I have a doctorate in revenge, and this would not go unanswered. I can be a prick too, but I'm a methodical prick. At that point on, I did my best to erect makeshift barriers as a temporary solution. It wasn't perfect, but at least it showed that we were doing everything in our power to prevent balls from going over the fence. I also submitted plans for a permanent structure to the HOA. The typical approval time was two weeks, but the little virus that ruled the world basically crapped on the approval process, and I was in limbo. Tragically, another basketball fell victim to senseless violence. It was the ninth basketball over the fence in approximately 8 months. The kids were terrified to ask for their basketball back and it wasn't even worth the hassle anymore. But that didn't stop Kevin though. On the ninth bounce over, Kevin comes furiously knocking on our door, and when my wife answers the door, he says, Is OP home? My wife tells him, Yes, but he's injured his back. How can I help you? Kevin says, Get OP. Right now. My wife tells him, Kevin, OP can't even walk right now. How can I help you? He says, The basketball went over the fence again. What did I tell you? It needs to stop. Your kids need to stop playing basketball. Keep them inside. He was now telling my wife how to parent. Good luck, buddy. My wife says to him, I'm sorry the ball went over the fence. We continue to tell our kids to be careful, but I'm not going to tell them that they can't play basketball in their own yard. Kevin says, you will tell your boys to stop playing. If the ball comes over the fence again, we are calling the police. Tell your boys to stay out of our yard because they are trespassing. My wife responds, if you want to call the cops, then you go ahead and do it. However, the boys do not go in your yard at all anymore. Hearing all this, I was losing my crap in the bedroom. I could hear the conversation, but I physically couldn't make it to the front door. My wife was fuming and I was pissed. Yay for back injuries. We had no intention of starting a war, but the boys were doing nothing wrong. We had informed Kevin that we were getting a hoop, and his wife said no problem, and they had zero issues with it, so I'm thinking, what the F is going on? And that's when the 10th bounce over happened. The idiot called the cops. He actually called the cops on my boys. I don't know what he said, but the police department sent two cruisers. I just sat in my garage man cave to watch it all play out. The cops go to the neighbor's house first, and they are there for more than an hour, and I can only assume that we're being painted as horrible neighbors. It's now pitch dark outside, and I was startled by the time an officer approaches. Officer Kimball comes over and says, Sorry, hi, I'm Officer Kimball with the police department. How are you this evening? I tell him, typically I would say fine, but I don't typically have a cop in my garage. Officer Kimball tells me, I understand. The reason we're here is because the neighbors called about trespassing. Now they said nobody went in their yard today, but they want you to understand that they will press charges next time. Is that understood? Hearing him tell me this, I was baffled. I did my best to maintain my composure, but I'm certain my face was screaming, are you effing serious? Officer Kimball then pointed at his body camera and he mouthed, recording. He then gave me a thumbs up gesture, and I immediately seized the opportunity to F with him saying, hey, do you want another beer? You can't just drink one. The officer laughs and says, What? I didn't have a beer with you. I laugh and tell the officer, I'm kidding, and we're fully aware of their intent to press charges. I'll be sure to do my best to prepare my boys for the rigors of prison life. I think jail will be good for them too. It might even toughen them up a bit. To that, the officer laughs and says, Okay, I just want to ensure that you are aware. Ideally, we would like to see neighbors talk things like this out, not call the cops. But unfortunately, this is what it's come to, and I just want to ensure that you're aware. I tell him yes, and Officer Kimball then walked back to his patrol car, but he didn't leave though. I assume he was just finishing mundane paperwork, but he sat there for at least 20 minutes. And then much to my surprise, he returned, and he was a completely different officer. He comes back laughing and says, hey, I just wanted to talk to you without the camera. They seem really eager to press charges if your sons are caught in their yard again, so do us both a favor and please try not to let that happen. 
Now, I'm not saying you can't play basketball, but if you can, please do something about it bouncing over the fence because that neighbor demanded I arrest your children tonight. I laugh and say, that lady is crazy. My wife and I concluded that. And he says, yeah, they said you trespassed multiple times before and she wanted to press charges tonight. At that, I laugh and say, I'm so sorry you have to deal with this. I really am. I can assure you that they have never gone in their yard without permission. Not once. They're terrified of her. She taunts them from the other side of the fence and records them. Seriously, they're scared of her. The officer says, I believe you. There's something not right with that woman. She said the basketball wakes her son up and she won't hesitate to press charges. I just wanted to tell you, without the body cam. I can't exactly call her crazy when it's running. He then left. The next day, my wife was mowing the grass and I was planting a flower bed. Kevin and Karen had just returned from another Chick-fil-A run. Then the unthinkable happened. Kevin exits the car and he makes a beeline straight for me and he was angry. He gets really close, uncomfortably close, and he says, Hey, your boys went into my yard and got a ball today. They may think we didn't notice, but we did. You need to tell those boys to stay out of my yard or the cops are coming. I say to him, wait a minute, I don't tolerate people who lie, cheat, or steal, and you are lying right now. He then says to me, your boys were in my yard. I tell him we were at an all-day soccer tournament in a different state. We've only been home for a couple of hours and they haven't played basketball since we've been home. You are lying. At that, he sputters and says, well, we're sick of them getting balls from our yard without permission. I tell him, look, Kevin, I get it. However, you fail to recall when your wife said the boys were more than welcome to go into your yard. And before I could even finish that sentence, I heard his wife. Karen marches over and screams, I never said that. I would never say that. You are lying. The woman screamed at the top of her lungs mere inches from my face. And I tell her, yes, you did. She says, I never said that. You're wrong. I am so sick of your heathens going into my yard. And your heathens better not go in my yard again, or I will have them arrested. I know the law. Hearing her say that, the I know the law statement really rubbed me wrong. I was about to open my mouth and respond, but my wife comes over saying, They don't go in your yard. They're good kids. They're not heathens, and you better stop recording my children. Karen says to my wife, Oh, shut up. You guys are trash. Your children play in the streets and they run around the neighborhood like criminals. Everybody knows you're trash. At this point, I'm thinking, oh, Lord have mercy. And I'm semi-worried about Karen's future health because hearing her say that, I think my wife wanted to expire Karen's shelf life. My wife says, excuse me? My children never play in the streets and you are recording them. Karen says to my wife, just shut up. You are trashy and stupid and both your kids are stupid. At this point, I had enough. There was no point in arguing either. Mark Twain stated, never argue with an idiot because they'll drag you down to their level and they will beat you with experience. Mark's correct, and Karen was trying to drag us down. I don't know why, but I remember something that Kevin discussed with me when we first moved in. Their tree. They have a large maple tree and they have a juniper tree. Kevin always told me that they were in the process of contracting a company to crown and lift the maple tree. Furthermore, they were going to get the juniper tree off my fence. Dear reader, I know the law too. I know that I can legally trim anything that goes over my property line. Now all those pointless conversations were making sense. It was my time to join this exciting game called pettiness. That's when I say, Karen, you have until Sunday to get your juniper off my fence. Karen responds, shut up. I told you it's getting handled this fall. I tell her it's June. You have until Sunday. Karen says, or what? I then allow my wife to rejoin the conversation and I go to the garage. I grab my clippers and prune a couple of inches off the juniper tree and lay them at her feet and cue the T-Rex effing volcano voice. Karen is screaming and says, what the hell do you think you're doing to my tree? I told you it'll be done this fall. I tell her, nope, you have until Saturday now. And Karen says, my God, you are dumb too, just like your wife. To which I say, now you have until Friday. Karen then threatens me and says, you better not touch my tree again. I will call the cops and I will have you thrown in jail tonight. Now I see where your kids get it from. I tell her, you wanted to play the law game and I know the law too. I'll be back in just a minute with some more of your juniper tree. I again return to the tree. I now have another two feet of juniper tree to place at her feet. The more she screams, the smaller her tree becomes. This was just an enjoyable game of cause and effect. Meanwhile, I see Kevin and Kevin Jr. running like Usain Bolt to secure their tree with toe straps. 
Karen then screams at me, I hope you're happy. You are terrible people. You both are terrible parents and your children are heathens. You people need to move because you are horrible parents. Horrible parents. Dear reader, I had enough. I was at critical mass and I was gonna explode. Karen continued to yell at my wife and I was zoning out. It was comical to watch Kevin and Kevin Jr. secure their tree to the porch in order to get it off the fence. Once complete, they made their way back to the one-sided screaming party and that's when Kevin screams, we're calling the cops. It then turns into an all-out arguing match, and I basically scream, just shut the F up. I raked up 21 bags of leaves this past fall. 21. Which is funny, because we don't have a tree in our backyard. It was from your tree. And you know what, Kevin? I didn't bitch. I didn't knock on your door. I didn't complain. We live in a suburbia. That stuff happens. They're kids. Kids play outside, and I don't want the ball in your yard either. And that's when Karen drops the bomb. She says, well, maybe you should learn how to parent your horrible children. And I just lost it. I'd say to her, you know what? That's the last time you questioned me about my parenting. My children are going to grow up to be productive members of society. And I find it comical that you have the audacity to question my parenting when you have a 49-year-old son living in your house for the past nine years. I assume it was because of the divorce and the bankruptcy he filed nine years ago, right? You complain that my children are waking your child up? Well, your child is a jobless 49-year-old man living at home with mom and dad. Hearing me say all that, Karen was baffled and she says, How do you know that? Do you go snooping through our mail too? I tell her I'm really good at what I do and I found everything online. I know that you're 69 years old and you lost your license due to reckless endangerment charge in 2017. I know that Kevin Jr. has five moving violations and one DUI. I also know that he was fired from his grounds crew job with the HOA. I know your husband's 72 years old and he wears the same effing shirt every day, so I can only assume that laundry is not a priority. I know your phone numbers and your email accounts and I know a lot of stuff about you. Your child is 49 years old, he lives at home, so maybe you should be more worried about your parenting and less about my parenting. And listen, we can have a civil relationship or we can have a war. But just remember this though, I'm going to effing outlive you. And with that, they stormed inside their house. They weren't happy or impressed with my ability to figure this out. It wasn't over for me though. They were unaware of actions that I took to keep the peace. For example, I never let my boys play basketball when they're outside eating dinner. I didn't let them play before 9 o'clock or after 7 o'clock. And I never bitched about Garth Brooks blaring on max volume outside while watching the national news. Now, I was never much of a basketball guy, but I am now though. Karen and Kevin had just sat down to enjoy their meal, and I don't have to spy either. I can see them out of my French doors as I watch the national news. I patiently waited for them to set up their outside dinner perfectly. I could hear Tim McGraw playing, and that's when I opened my French doors. I like music too, so I figured I would get my groove on and play basketball. I walk outside carrying a giant Amazon speaker, and that's when I say, Alexa, play Bitches Ain't Shiz by Dr. Dre. The music starts playing, and that's when I say, Alexa, volume to 10. In that very moment, I developed a fondness for basketball and rap music. Now, I know what I was doing was petty, but I had zero Fs to give at that point. I had one last F you, and it was my final card to play, an Uno reverse card of sorts. I was playing basketball while listening to music blaring when I had an epiphany. My neighbors across the street had a tree removed last week, and I'm thinking how much it would cost to trim a large maple tree that overhangs my property. And I'm not talking a couple of branches either but more like one half of a more than 100 foot tall tree. I called the tree removal company and offered them a sizable chunk of change and informed them of my delicate problem. The day they move their large equipment to my backyard and take their time getting ready, guess who comes running out of the house? Karen and Kevin come running out. Kevin comes out screaming, hey, buddy. Now I do want to note that he called me buddy. Not horrible parents, no names, just buddy. I ask him, what can I do for you? Kevin says, what are they doing over here? I say to him, oh, them? Uh, they're just gonna trim the tree. Kevin asks me, just a trim? And I respond, yep, just a little trim. That's when Karen says, you know that tree was a gift from our daughter, right? We don't want anything drastic. It's been with us for over 40 years now. Kevin says, yeah, it was a gift from our daughter. How much are you thinking about trimming? I say to him, well, just so you're aware, and since you know the law, 
you understand that I can legally trim anything that overhangs on my property, right? And I also have approval from my lawyer and the HOA to trim it. Kevin repeats himself and says, how much are you talking about trimming then? I say to him, well, my property line is right here and it extends up to this space right here. I'm going to trim every single branch that comes over to my property. So about maybe one third of your tree. It's going to look really funny when I'm done, but oh well. Karen then starts to cry, and it was a really, really ugly cry. There was no more rage left in her. She was defeated, and Kevin was defeated as well. This wasn't my desire. Don't get me wrong. I don't care if she cried, but it wasn't my intent. I then tell her, listen, I can do this, or you can stop recording my effing kids. Karen responds, if I stop recording, I say to her, look, we don't have to like each other because I certainly don't like you guys. My boys never go into your yard without your permission, ever. I don't care if you keep basketballs, but I will be damned if you record my kids ever again. If you do, I will cut your tree down without warning. Kevin says to me, oh, thank goodness. Thanks, bud. I tell him, no worries, friend. I'm just trying to be neighborly, but just remember, I'm dead serious about that tree, and I'm pretty certain I will outlive you. Now I know I'm a prick, I know we're both wrong at wrong times, but I draw the line when a 69 year old woman sees fit to torment my kids. We've only had one problem since these events occurred. Kevin Jr's car sat in the same spot for 9 months. I submitted 20 home improvement requests to the HOA. They noticed the registration on Junior's vehicle was two years outdated and they had a towed. Karen then accused me of having a towed and we had another colorful conversation. But it ended there when I mentioned that tree. Guys, I am a little bit disappointed that OP didn't cut any branches off because he totally could have and destroyed those neighbors. But that being said, I feel like OP and his wife did take the high road against these entitled neighbors because who knows, Chopping down the side overhanging his side might have led to an all-out, never-ending battle between the two. Like, at least without cutting it, he has the upper hand against these entitled neighbors, right? Guys, let me know if OP did the right thing by showing the entitled Karen neighbors mercy. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's wonderful story. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these wild, wild stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash... I don't work here, lady. Where a Karen slaps OP for not serving her husband and she gets destroyed. Go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.